Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about operational and budgetary impacts of the ACF regulation. This is part two of a five part video series on the state and local government regulation component. Uh, so I want to say thank you to Sacramento Clean Cities Coalition, East Base Clean Cities, Silicon Valley Clean Cities, uh, NAFA, as well as the Municipal Equipment Maintenance Association, MEMA here in NorCal, and uh, Mr. Worthington from Santa Clara County, as well as myself, David Rentschler from uh, the city of Fairfield, and we're going to uh, discuss some uh, high level uh, going over the regulation. So we're going to talk about the exemption process for vehicles, uh, fueling infrastructure extensions, procurement, annual fleet reporting requirements, and then some of the regulatory language. So getting into the exemption process for vehicles. So CARB uh, is going to have a list of truck types that are exempt from the ZEV purchase requirement. If they're not available as a ZEV or an NZEV, which is the plug-in hybrid, and they're gonna put them on their website. They have uh, by January 1st of 2025 to put that list up. Uh, so that we can see it on the ACF website. Uh, the list is not going to include any pickups, buses, uh, box trucks, vans, or any Class 8 tractors or semis, as uh, there are plenty of those available, according to CARB. Uh, so the individual fleet exemption process. So fleets can submit. Uh, an exemption request if a ZEV is not available for a specific body configuration, uh, or if a ZEV cannot meet the operational range or duty cycles for that fleet. Uh, you will have to have data and documentation uh, to include in that exemption request, and CARB has 45 days to confirm approval by email. Uh, there is no appeal process to dispute it if CARB does not uh, grant you an exemption. So on construction infrastructure, you can request an extension. Uh, those can be for a construction delay of up to two years. However, the, the circumstances must be beyond the fleet owner's control. So it could have to do with uh, delays related to fueling equipment, uh, but you do have to have an executed contract uh, in place for the infrastructure, uh, including construction permits uh, issued at least one year prior to the next applicable regulatory reporting compliance date. Uh, examples of what might cause a construction delay if you have a, a change in general contractor, uh, if there was a delay in the manufacture or shipment of the fueling infrastructure equipment, if you had uh, delays in obtaining power from your utility provider, uh, or natural disasters would be another example. So for those construction infrastructure extension requests, uh, if a ZEV purchase agreement must be entered into prior to submitting that extension request. So a ZEV could be delivered and need to be stored for up to two years until that infrastructure installation is complete. You must submit those at least 45 calendar days prior to the next applicable compliance date for the CARB executive officer to consider that request. Uh, as always, there's documentation that's required and uh, they're to be submitted by email to the trucker's email address. And again, there's no appeal process to dispute any exemption being declined. So for new site electrification delay extension requests, uh, you may have up until January 1st of 2030 and that's a site electrification extension requests are to align the estimated ZEV delivery date 
with the amount of time the electric utility determines it needs to supply the required power to a site. So those delays can be up to five years, with the initial being up to three years, and a subsequent request might be approved for up to two years. Again, they have to be done 45 calendar days prior to the expiration of the initial extension period. And in this case, if you have a ZEV on order, it could be delivered and need to be stored for up to five years until that infrastructure is complete. So you may ex request that extension for the number of ZEVs for which the electric utility cannot supply sufficient power to support. The fleet owners required to deploy the maximum number of ZEVs that the site can support. So if it does support under the current power, you need to you need to uh, be able to uh, deploy those ZEVs for that. To maintain the extension, the fleet owner must deploy an additional ZEVs that can be supported by electric utility upgrades to the site's electrical capacity each calendar year during that delay until it's complete. And the fleet owner may request an extension for the number of ZEVs for which the electric utility cannot supply sufficient power to support. Again, the fleet is required to deploy the maximum number of ZEVs that that site can support. Uh, you would submit through truckers. And again, CARB has 45 days to confirm approval by email, and there's no appeal process. Both extension request types require a fleet to begin planning one year ahead for infrastructure installation. I will review the procurement requirements to hire compliant fleets at this time. Beginning on January 1st, 2024, fleets will be required to hire or dispatch ACF compliant fleets. The first reporting period for compliance the uh, deadline is April 1st of 2025. Provided hired fleets are purchasing ZEVs to meet their 2024 regulatory compliance requirements, they will be in compliance up until March 30th of 2025. Uh, compliant fleets are private or government agency fleets in compliance with the ACF regulations at the time that they are hired and throughout the term of any contract or agreement, or more importantly, are exempt from the ACF regulation. Any high priority or federal fleet that meets any of the following four criteria are required to comply with the ACF regulation. Number one, the entity has $50 million or more in total gross annual revenues, and that includes all parts of the company's operations within the United States. As an example, if you have a branch of a company within California and its revenues are below $50 million, Initially, they might think that they are exempt from the regulation, but you need to total up all gross revenues across the United States, which may take them over the $50 million mark and have the ACF comply to them. Number two is a fleet owner that owns, operates, or directs the operation of 50 or more vehicles in the total fleet, excluding light duty package delivery vehicles. Number three, is a fleet owner a controlling party whose fleet, in combination with other fleets, operate under common ownership and they control 50 or more vehicles in the total fleet, again, excluding light duty package delivery vehicles. And number four is any federal government agency or state or local government agency, as defined in Title 13, which is listed here, that has elected to comply with the ZEV milestones options which are one of the two pathways to compliance for ACF, which we've discussed in a previous uh, webinar series. Examples of uh, these hired compliant fleets would be rental car or truck companies. The rental agreement is less uh, than one year. Vehicle leasing companies with lease agreements, less than one year. Trucking companies hired to pick up or deliver large goods contracted NGOs delivering services or goods, and general contractors. Currently, CARB is going to be coming out with an FAQ to uh, exclude the need for us to collect data on subcontractors and subcontractors of subcontractors. So currently, we've been told that we only have to collect the data 
for general contractors that we hire for any projects. Here's some additional examples of the type of businesses that uh, we will need to track. Facility repair businesses, equipment rental businesses, bottled water delivery, uniform, food delivery, moving, fuel delivery, people transport, and public works contractors. And I'm sure there's a lot more that you will uh, understand need to comply with this fleet in your own uh, operations. There is an exception, exception, which are private or government agency fleets that are exempt from the ACF regulation. And again, you need to look at uh, what vehicles and agencies are required to meet the ACF. If they are exempt, then you don't need to worry about collecting this information from them. Verification of ACF compliance. Uh, number one, you need to check for verification that each fleet will be hired or dispatched as listed on the CARB ACF website as a compliant fleet. Initially, all those fleets will not be listed. As time goes on, the list will grow and it will make it easier for government fleets to check and verify if they're hiring a, a compliant fleet. If they are not on the ACF uh, website, listed as a compliant fleet, then you need to acquire a statement from them stating their fleet is not subject to the high priority and federal fleets and the state and local government fleet regulations. We call that uh, statement an attestation. We also need to collect and retain verification documents and at attestation statements on a calendar year basis. We cannot hire or dispatch a fleet that does not meet steps one and two above. Let me repeat that. We cannot hire or dispatch a fleet that does not meet steps one and two above. That is very important to understand. We need to also provide disclosure of ACF compliance in writing, uh, and it includes in the regulatory language and new hiring or dispatch contracts and agreements. The specific language is listed below, which states vehicles with a gross vehicle weight rating greater than 8,500 pounds and light duty package delivery vehicles operating in California may be subject to the California Air Resources Board Advanced Clean Fleets regulations. Such vehicles may therefore be subject to requirements to reduce emissions of air pollutants. For more information, please visit the CARB Advanced Clean Fleets website at the following address. This language verbatim needs to be included in any any uh, hiring or dispatch contracts or agreements. We need to make sure that the companies that we hire are made aware that their fleet of vehicles may have to comply with the ACF regulation. We also have to uh, include the regulatory language listed in red below for any type of sales documentations for vehicles that are sold or disposed of from your fleets. And the language states a vehicle operated in California may be subject to the California Air Resources Board, Advanced Clean Fleets Regulation. It therefore could be subject to requirements to reduce emissions of air pollutants. For more information, please visit the CARB Advanced Clean Fleets website. The reason for this language is to ensure that anyone purchasing a vehicle from you directly or through an auction is aware that that vehicle may need to be compliant to the ACF regulation depending on that particular fleet status as being a compliant or non-compliant uh, fleet according to the regulation. Uh, so, and again, this includes contracts with auction companies. Uh, they should be amended to require this language starting for January 1st, 2024. We must keep all the records of reported information uh, and required document documentation for a period of five years. The records must be available in electronic or paper format to CARB staff within 72 hours of a written or verbal request for audit. Examples of the documents are vehicle purchase, rental and lease documents, purchase agreements, purchase orders, notices to proceed, leasing agreements or rental agreements for vehicles. If a vehicle is sold or consigned to an auction house, a copy of the contract and the transfer of liability form filled uh, with, filed with DMV is also necessary. And that's very important 
to collect the transfer of liability and hold that in your documentation for up to five years. Additional examples are documentation for mutual aid assistance. There are some uh, exemptions for the percentages of vehicles that need to be converted to ZEVs in mutual aid assistance situations, but there are requirements for documentations verifying that the mutual, agree, uh, mutual aid agreements exist and how they specifically are applied to your fleet or working with other uh, fleets within that mutual aid agreement. We also need to continue to collect a documentation of hiring entity and that is their certificates of reported compliance or attestations that they are exempt from the regulation as well as copies of contracts and disclosures of the regulation that we are required to make. Sales disclosure documentation, we also need to keep documents, sales documents, auction house documents, things like that. And then also the state and local fleet regulatory enforcement. Uh, the government agency individual employees who fail to comply with the requirements of the regulation, who fails to submit any information, report, or statement required by the regulation, or knowingly submits any false statement or representation in any application, report, statement, or other document filed, maintain or use for the purposes of compliance with this regulation, may be subject to penalties. Uh, just to summarize all that, we have to be in compliance with the regulation and all facets of it. We need to know about the regulation. We know need to know how it's applied, and we need to make sure that we are in compliance. There are penalties for not being in compliance, and they vary significantly, but the minimum amount is $500. And individuals that do not meet the above statement may be charged with a misdemeanor and serve not more than one year in county jail. <laughs> Thank you, David. Uh, let's talk about uh, some of the annual reporting requirements. So <clears throat> reporting deadlines and uh, the fleet owners must submit uh, your annual compliance report no later than April 1st. Uh, this is each year all the way through uh, year 2045. Uh, as the fleet is composed uh, January 1st of the corresponding calendar year. So uh, the reporting period is is during the month of March uh, so that you're you're done by April 1st. Your initial report uh, is going to be April 1st of 2024 is when it has to be uh, submitted. And then beginning January 1st of 2025, Fleet owners that submit initial reporting information after the initial reporting deadline uh, are subject to penalties. Then required information. Uh, so each vehicle, you need the VIN, uh, vehicle make and model. Uh, so most of this stuff you did on the ACT one-time reporting. Uh, so you should have a lot of it already. And then uh, don't forget the engine family and engine model year for uh, vehicles that are added to the fleet after January 1st of 2024. Uh, required information for each fleet vehicle. Uh, so funding contract, uh, the start and end date for vehicles purchased with California state funding so if the vehicle is to be excluded during the funding contract period. So some of these funding programs uh, don't let you use uh, state funding and also consider it part of your purchase. So the ZEV purchase reporting, fleet owners that are replacing a vehicle pursuant to the ZEV purchase exemption specified in, in section 2013.1D must identify which vehicle is being replaced. The joint compliance reporting, if an agency chooses to comply jointly as specified in section 2013K, each individual department, division, district, subsidiary, or agency must report separately and include the CARB issued ID number of the primary controlling agency 
or designated primary entity. For emergency mileage, the fleet owner must report the number of miles traveled in support of the emergency for backup vehicles used in those operations that would exceed the backup vehicle mileage limit. Changes to an existing fleet. So if you're going to add or remove a vehicle from the California fleet, they must be reported within 30 calendar days of being added or being removed. If a backup vehicle exceeds the allowable mileage limit, the change must be reported within 30 calendar days of the date the mileage limit was exceeded. And if you do any ZEV conversions, uh, you must report the vehicle's new fuel type within 30 calendar days of being converted. For backup vehicle odometer or, or hub odometer reading reporting, so odometer readings have to, uh, you have to report annually the odometer reading from January 1st of the current calendar year and the date the reading was recorded from a properly functioning odometer or hub odometer. If you have an odometer failure or you replace the odometer, uh, the vehicle's originally equipped odometer fails and is replaced then you have to report the following information within 30 calendar days of the date the original odometer failed or was replaced. Whichever comes first. The original odometer's final reading, the new odometer's initial reading, and the date of the replacement. Hub odometers are the same. So you still have to report uh, within 30 calendar days, but you also must report the serial number. So for more information, please look at the regulatory language. Uh, the websites are listed here, and you can find the, especially the final uh, regulation order. For more information, please sign up for emails on the latest news about the ACF regulation. There's a link here and you click on the subscribe button and this is CARB's uh, listserv that will then send you information. Thank you to the Clean Cities Coalitions and Fleet Associations that are listed below for making this recording possible. They include East Bay Clean Cities Coalition, Sacramento Clean Cities Coalition, Long Beach Clean Cities, Silicon Valley Clean Cities, as well as the Municipal Equipment Maintenance Association and, and NAPA. Without these organizations, we could not have made this presentation possible. There's a lot of information related to the ACF regulation, and we've had a lot of different fleet managers and professionals reviewing that information to ensure what we are presenting is accurate and will help you with your compliance. One of the lessons learned from this particular uh, presentation is that there's a lot of documentation requirements, tracking requirements, you may find that your particular fleet may not have a fleet management information software system that can provide all this data quickly and easily, which means there's going to be a lot of hand calculations and spreadsheets to track all of this. It's very, very important you begin the process of establishing procedures for tracking the information, collecting the data, and you may consider using telematics as one of the tools to be in compliance. Thank you again. Here's our contact information. Should you have any questions, uh, we will have additional presentations of this five part series on the ACF regulation that we hope that you find useful.